Look where we are. It's the duplex and you can't tell much from this angle because it's very sunny and I'm not far away enough. Um, but it, it's under roof again. Um, still hard to see. You see our porta potty? Hold on, I'm gonna walk way back so you can see it. Eh, still impossible to see. There's a roof with a peak. It's still a very shallow roof. It's not super dippy, but it's gonna shed water much better and make it a nicer property because I won't fear that it's gonna flood all the time. So, now that it's under roof, the next step is framing and then putting the siding and stuff back on and then um, it's very exciting once framing's finished because we can do electrical and plumbing and then we can do drywall and that's when it all starts to come together. But I wanted to walk through it with you because one difference is that we have, see under roof, look how beautiful that looks. Strong, new lumber that's actually doing its job. So I'm walking up the stairs, I'm on the left side of the duplex. This is the firewall in the center. This is the right side. That's how close we are. So um, there will be soundproofing and firewall and stuff. These are actually two houses with two different addresses. So we're gonna rent each separately. Families can stay in both if they want. They can have each one, but it will feel private. You're not gonna hear someone through the wall or feel like you're cohabitating with a family you don't know because they're gonna feel very separate. Um, so now I'm up the stairs and I wanted to talk through the framing with you guys. So the way that we walk through plans is we put these boards on the floor and they help us picture everything. So this is all mapped out and I'm so glad we did it because we already made one change and we're gonna make another one. So I'm gonna show you guys how this works. So first of all, one thing to note is that I'm back, this is me on the stairs. This was a wall right when you got to the top of the stairs if you watched the before tour video, you were hit in the face of the wall. So we pushed it way back and actually the thing we changed is we had a five foot clearance from the top of the stairs which is, that's, that's one sherry, I'm 5'2". So it's not a small landing, but when we mapped it out, we thought it would feel even better with the six foot clearance. So now I think, I think it's actually like six feet, eight inches where you'll hit this and it's not really a wall. It's a door that leads to the back bedroom. This is going to be a door that leads to the linen closet. It helps us visualize it. The reason we brought the door forward because you theoretically would put a door on the bedroom so it's a rectangle here is that when you move the door forward, you get in swing. So it means that basically when you open this door, it will open and not hit stuff in the bedroom. It basically buys you more room when you can move the door out. And we actually think it will look nice to have a big door here and a big door here. They're gonna be the same size and it's gonna look nice at the top of the stairs to have that continuity. So then I'm gonna try not to fall through the floor. This is the master. This um, chimney is gonna be exposed. We just have to meet certain fire code and insulation regulations. So it, we're thinking it's gonna look like a nook. So there's probably going to be like shelves or something cool um, and it will be an accent, but it's never gonna be flat with the wall. Like the wall has to come out so it will make it like a nook. Still, I think we're gonna have a cool feature when it's done. So this is going to be reframed. There's a lot of problems with the um, bracing underneath this one, so we have to fix it, but Eventually, this window is gonna become the door to the master bathroom, and the master bathroom is gonna be right here. Um, and then the only other things we framed out to visualize them were, these are um, two closets we're gonna have. So one can be the closet for the room, one can be a locked owner's closet, or we can store something else up here. It's just um, gonna make sense of this room that was really long um, because we didn't need all the length by adding closets. You always need closets for storage. And this is gonna be a built-in bench. The window will be perfectly centered over the built-in bench and on the closets. It just isn't now because the window's not in the exact right place. It's gonna shift over like an inch to be original where it should have been to be centered over the window under it. Because the exterior of the house, you want perfect symmetry. You don't want the windows to not line up vertically on the exterior of the house. So, so when someone put this new vinyl window in, they shimmied it over a little too far and we're just gonna remedy that. So um, we'll walk back out of this room as you would. You'd walk past this linen closet and there would be a door about here that swings in. You'd see this window. I love when a door lines up with a window. So we're gonna put the door right in front of this window so you get the window light splashing into the hall. And this is essentially simulating the bunk room. So this piece of wood actually covers rot, but it's even wider than um, the bunk bed would be. But it helps me picture that much like the pink house bunk room, this is not gonna have a huge amount of floor space. But the way that we originally framed it in was it would go to here. Um, what that does is it pushes this bathroom over to here and it makes this front room, which you'd enter through a door right here, 
feel a little squished. It makes it impossible to put the bed here and the bed wouldn't be centered on this window because it squishes towards the window. So the bed would have to be here, which I don't love. I don't love walking into a room and turning and seeing the side of the bed and basically never facing the headboard unless you did this. So what we've decided to do, since this is incredibly narrow, I think it's only eight feet, eight inches, which is not wide enough, we don't think, for a nice adult bedroom, is that why have two small bedrooms when you can have one small bedroom that you're owning is very small and it's the kid's bunk room and make this a more gracious size. So we're going to basically push everything back a stud. It's gonna buy us like 16 to 18 inches. This bathroom's gonna shift over a little bit. This mudroom is just gonna start here so like yes there wouldn't be a spot for a dresser or whatever you're gonna put here but by nixing a dresser we get a nice big front room that's basically going to be as big and nice as the back room which is what we want we want two couples with kids to be able to comfortably stay and throw their kids in the bunk room or have their kids on air mattress downstairs but we didn't want two kind of bad bedrooms and one great one when we could have two great ones so that's the plan it does allow me by moving it in to make the door open to the window like I wanted because otherwise the door was going to be like here and it wasn't going to be as great. Now I get to put the door right on the window, move that wall. Um, the bed now can go under this window because by moving it out, the window is going to be centered again. It's imperative to walk the plan to figure this stuff out. I know this is probably the most boring, confusing video to you guys, but if you're ever mapping out a floor plan, I hope it's really helpful to lay these beams this way and see exactly what's gonna go where and like even if it's as obvious as writing door door like it's how we figure stuff out and we visualize it one of the coolest things I'm excited about up here because these are the big original windows with the diamond grills that yes need some repair but we're definitely maintaining them um, is that this is gonna have like I don't know maybe a bench or a dresser or something down here and then over here is going to be a covert closet. It's going to have a hanging bar, but any clothes that hang here because of where this wall cuts in, you will not see them. So you won't be laying in bed staring at a closet, but we can still leave this open, a cased opening. Um, it will allow the light to come in from the window, but it hides over here in this like kind of around the corner place, the yucky hanging stuff. So I'm actually really excited to make these front closets. I think they're going to be really unique features in the house and they're going to feel amazing because they have those diamond grills. So the entire right side is going to be exactly the same and um, downstairs is pretty much what I showed you last time. We haven't laid the floor um, boards out yet but um, oh this might scare you a little bit. Don't be scared. Um, this part of the house is rotten which is ironic because this part of the house is rotten on the pink house too. So apparently all these houses that had a side porch here and then later were enclosed were not done perfectly or to code or watertight. It sounds like the house is gonna fall apart. It's just this door <laughs> shaking. Um, so we have to reframe this side. It's um, something we knew pretty early on that we'd have to do so it doesn't really scare us. But um, yeah, uh, renovations this big are very messy but I think you get immune to them and you decide like, yeah, it's gonna look really bad until it looks better and then it's gonna look awesome. So that is where we are right now. Um, I hope you liked that weird little floor mapping tip. And um, I'm gonna put the, the actual layout floor plan in this post. So hopefully it helps you guys to look at the floor plan too and try to visualize all of it. Now I'm doing the finger thing. All right, good talk. Bye guys.